All right, welcome back. Um, Professor Ocho Waleke, former Commissioner of Finance, Simo State, is joining me right now at the table. Uh, Prof, welcome to the program. Thank you, Nancy. Now, let's get started. Um, where should I even start from? Because the issues are so humongous. Yes. <laughs> The but morning after part two. Yeah, you, know, you, had, you know you had part <laughs> one yesterday. <laughs> so you watch. <laughs> yes, I you follow I the show. Yes, yes because yesterday yes. I had Doc, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, yes. uh, the director of monetary policy uh, department at the central bank, and it was the morning after, after. the NPC. Yes. So today is what the yeah, morning whatever. after <laughs> the morning after part two, <laughs> part two so to yes, speak. Yes. Now, we I want to look at the CBN's policies, programs, interventions and a whole lot of things that Central Bank has done, even prior to the pandemic. Let me start by asking you this question because a lot of people are against the Central Bank. And I have asked this question times without number. Even I've raised it with the governor many times, the governor of the Central Bank. Now, why would you be dwelling on, you know, development initiatives? Why not stick to your corner? Your, co your core mandate. Your core mandate, which mm -hmm. is price stability. Yes. Why do you think it is so? Are you part of those that are also saying that let let them stick with what they are known for price stability? Okay, well, the, uh, there are two approaches really to this. Um, in theory, we we'll talk about a new liberal approach that um, says a central bank should focus on um, the the core mandate, um, especially with regard to uh, um, you know price stability. Uh, this school is promoted by the IMF. You know that encourages more of um, the in indirect means, you know, of um, um, tackling monetary policy. But there is also the developmental approach, which says that central banks to have that um, um, developmental, you know, function. Um, most times, not um, out of choice, but by necessity. You know, remember the central bank is um, the banker to the government. The central bank is also the lender of last resort. Okay, so the central bank um, will not fold its arms and watch, uh, for example, the economy tanking and then do nothing. Okay, so I am um, part of the school of thought that um, uh, believes that the central bank um, has a major role to play beyond the um, issue of um, you know, price stability. Even the CBN Act recognizes that. Uh, central bank uh, section 31 of the CBN Act 2007 um, gives the central bank the power, you know, to developmental finance, finance functions, even though the primary mandate is uh, maintenance of price um, stability. And um, that explains why, um, if you look at the central bank's uh, five-year strategy, especially the one from 2015, 2019, now we have a new one running from yes, 2019. You're yes. talking of the MFLA part two. MFLA, ahead, yes. The part two one. Yes. This he assumed the second tenor. Yes, the part two. Yeah. The, in the part one, they incorporated that you know, and re, you know, modified the vision of the central bank, you know, to say now the vision now is to be a model uh, central bank, um, you know, delivering not just price and financial system stability, but also promoting sustainable economic development. So that has now been integrated into the central bank um, mandate. Do you think they are doing a lot more of the developmental uh, initiatives than what? than maintenance of price stability? Yes, the, the uh, usually prevailing uh, circumstances di dictate that. Okay, if you look at the history of the uh, central bank banks and interventions in the economy, it actually dates back to 1964. 1964 when the central bank um, began um, uh, financing the then uh, commodity bonds. Okay, and um, uh, in, um, in 1977, their first product the you know targeting agriculture actually was launched the Ag agriculture credit guarantee scheme which is still you know in place now since then we notice that we now have a raft of interventions and these inter interventions are usually more rolled out more during period of crisis so we had you know many of them you know in the wake of the global financial crisis 2017 to, uh, 2007 and we also um, um, you know have um, um, a good number being churned out after the rece recession that we had in 2016, 2016, 2017. And now COVID-19 is also providing justification for further interventions by the central bank. So I think the central bank in interventions, um, again, uh, Nancy, also remember that when a central bank is hamstrung in relation to implementing monetary policy, when monetary policy traditional t methods, you know, appear to have reached their limits, the central bank, you know, um, tries to, 
um, influence ag aggregate supply, for example, you know, through these um, interventions. Because as we speak, just as um, you know, happened um, two days ago, I wasn't expecting the central bank, the MPC of the central bank, you know, to try to tinker with the MPR, you know. Um, even though inflation was rising? Yes, because even though. The, the traditional thing to do is that. You have raise inflation you, to you, raise, you raise the rates. Uh, you raise the rates, yes. Mm -hmm. But again, that is when if inflation is, um, um, you know, a, a product of uh, monetary factors. But when inflation is not caused by monetary factors, it's caused more by uh, structural liquid rigidities in the system. It's caused more by, you know, s supply side, um, the, you know, factors. Then you wouldn't be using the... Bench, the policy rate to do that. And that's why the central bank thinks that it's, it's dispersed, is approached through interventions. It's in the agri-value chain because the food inflation is where the problem is. If the uh, output can be ramped up uh, you know, in, in agriculture and uh, you have um, increased um, supply, that should moderate um, uh, prices. So I think that's the idea behind all of that. And uh, it's not just peculiar to Nigeria. Central banks all over the world have you know, been doing that. If you look at um, in November, in October last year, the deputy governor of the central bank, um, um, Adamu. Lamotte. Yes, yes. Um, um, you know, he, did, he had a webinar. And um, I, I had the privilege of uh, sitting on the panel. I was on the panel. And the webinar was on development finance uh, you know, of the central bank um, um, and owed a new look at an uh, central bank's uh, old uh, tool. And I was on the panel, and I cited the works of um, uh, Professor Gerard Emston, as well as that of um, Mohammed Arian. Okay, uh, you know, both of them in their in their mm -hmm. seminar works uh, proved That's showed the chief that economic advisor of uh, Alliance uh, uh, on Obama. Okay. He worked under Mohammed Arian. Worked. Um, he wrote the Central only Bank, game, the, only the only game, game in, in town. town. Yes, I interviewed him. Yes. A few months ago. Oh, beautiful. Yes, the only game in town. The only game yes. in town. So you know, this um, and Professor Gerard of, of um, Masakita University. This, these people provided evidence that um, central banks uh, interventions during periods of crisis actually helped the economy, you know, to turn turn the corner. Um, so as I said, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. The mm. central banks of um, many emerging countries, even developed um, economies, you know, are using um, unorthodox, uh, heterodox measures outside of the normal monetary policy tools. Even in the US, for example, the Federal Reserve is using more of an um, asset purchase program now. Bond you wouldn't call that a mm -hmm. traditional monetary instrument. The Bank of England, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, they're all doing, um, you know, asset purchase programs. Um, and back home too, um, the central bank is um, also um, using um, policies like loan to deposit ratio, for example, differentiated cash reserve um, ratio. The cash reserve ratio is high at 27.5, but there are also measures around that that should help the banks, you know, uh, channel some liquidity, you know, into the system, such as that differential cash, cash reserve ratio that returns the, um, r you know, the money to the banks if they uh, finance uh, projects in agriculture, in manufacturing. Okay, if we take a look at all the policies or interventions that the central bank has been making for years now, is it all good? Or is there a kind of, is there, is there a slice of bad or a slice of ugly in all of it? Yes, as I said earlier, you, you have a raft of them now. And um, what I think, what I would suggest in, in this program is that the challenge remains that of monitoring, you know, and evaluation and, um, and, re and you know, uh, disclosure and, and reporting. That is the challenge for me. Um, at that MPC um, meeting, the communique, in the communique, the, the CBN governor talked about the um, size of some of the interventions in terms of amount dispersed as well as the beneficiaries okay but we also need to know the repayment you know um, levels mm. okay of so 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 that has gone out how much you know has come back by because they are usually soft loans okay especially those of them that have been on you know for some time now uh, so we need to monitor we need to um, evaluate and then uh, we also need to have um, uh, some studies, like if you go to Central Bank website now, um, you wouldn't uh, see some of the things I'm saying. Uh, we, we, we need to have studies that measure the impact of um, uh, these interventions, you know, on the economy. But one can say on the surface that they have been impacting uh, positively. For example, uh, if you're measuring impacts, you're looking at the objectives of those programs, and then you're assessing impacts in line with the objectives. One of the objectives, for example, is um, import substitution. 
you want to uh, reduce um, the import bill, for example. So you now check, has import bill dropped with respect to say rice? The answer is yes. So you could say it's um, uh, in terms of the anchor borrower program that has been uh, successful. Now, one, another uh, objective could also be to create more um, you know, employment, employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, taking the objectives one after the other for each of the programs, there is need to conduct studies to know the extent to which they have um, been done. And it's not just for bank staff. Mm -hmm. These are not studies for the central bank staff to do. I'm talking about studies by independent um, uh, bodies. So and I want to recommend here that the central bank can utilize universities Universities director, Directorate of Research can assemble crack teams that will do this job. If you want to do, for example, what is the impact of the Angkor Bora program in the um, Northeast, you take a university in the Northeast, may go to their director of um, research and ask the person to assemble a team. The person will get for you somebody from agriculture, an academic from uh, statistics department, because it's going to be multidisciplinary, economics department, uh, possibly finance, and so on, and then put them together and give them this assignment. When they now bring their report, you now compare their report with the one done by the bank staff. Research, because they have a research department. Of course, they have a competent too. research yeah. um, uh, department. So you now compare. The, it's important to have these independent views, OK, and not just rely on that of the bank staff, mm. because that will shape policy going forward. What kind of jobs do you think have been created by these interventions? Because uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the governor was answering uh, the question about the ways and means facility, which the Fitch, uh, Fitch ratings uh, wrote about a few days ago. And it did say definitely, like you said, is a banker to the government, a banker of last resort. L land of last resort. Yes, a, land, yeah. a land of la last resort. Yes. But if you take a look at all those initiatives and interventions, what kind of jobs do you think have been created? And are those uh, jobs, um, new jobs, are those jobs changed perhaps from one job to another as a result of I got a soft loan that is CBN funded? Or are some of the jobs, are those jobs, are they dead jobs? Then they resuscitated them. Prof, I hope you understand my question. Yes. The are there new kind of jobs that have been created? Yes. Are there some jobs that have been resuscitated? If they are resuscitated jobs, what kind of jobs are they? And are they people that have been unemployed, but as a result of the soft loans, became employed? Beautiful. Beautiful. So, so th this, these are the kinds of questions that will be contained in that instrument. Mm. So it's like for, I'm For the research, <laughs> yes. Instrument. Okay. Because these, are, these kind of questions, you won't find them. If you go to the CBN web website, you won't, you won't get answers to them. But if uh, you know, research is conducted, I'm not talking about research by maybe a consultant in Lagos that will, that will start quoting uh, you know, flight fee, hotel accommodation, no. If a research is conducted by people in the universities, okay, you get these kinds of, uh, because some, most of the time too, even the researches that we fi we'll find, you know, done by some of these um, people, when they get to us, you, 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 know, you tend to pick uh, holes in them either because the sample size is faulty or the instrumentation is faulty or even the method of anal analyzing data is faulty. So I think these are some of the things that um, support you know, what I've just said, that there is need for monitoring and evaluation of the, um, this, many of these uh, programs to know the level of their effectiveness, the effectiveness in relation to objectives. And let me weigh, weigh in a little on this issue of um, Fitch. Now, I, I think the issue of um, um, you know, financing uh, government uh, activities um, you know, shouldn't be a problem, really. Because if you look at the balance sheet of, of, the, of a central bank, a typical balance sheet, okay, the bulk of the liabilities is usually the currency in circulation and um, the uh, bank's uh, reserves to the central bank, which in economics we call high-powered money. That's what you have as uh, the bulk of the, the liabilities. So if these liabilities, on the one side is, li is a liability, on the other side it will also show up as uh, loans, loans by the central bank, you know, to the government. Now, the problem is when these loans don't come back. But if you give a loan to the government, for example, and the loans are paid back, okay, your balance sheet, you know, is not, um, is unaffected. But when the loans are made and they don't come back, that is when you have a situation where you have liabilities that are not represented by assets. And that's when the central bank balance sheet begins to have problem. So it is in the character of central banks to um, assist the government through ways and means. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, lend to support the idea.
that yes, that is possible, but provided the government, you know, pays back the whatever loans it has is taken it from the central bank. Is there a threshold that the central bank? You know, can, at, at the, can, the threshold can, um, we had was five percent. That mm. the whatever you are giving to this, uh, because of the fiscal space, you know, that is um, uh, sh shallow. The threshold has always been: don't give more than five percent of the previous year's, um, you know, FGN return revenue. Okay, but we understand even from that Fitch report that um, for 2020 that was you know far exceeded and for, for understandable reasons you know because but the central of central uh, bank governor said 4.5 percent. He said it no no 4.5 percent is the total interventions. GDP. Okay, in relation to GDP, GDP which yeah. is the least, mm. uh, you know, for, for, for the countries, mm. you know, they looked at. Even South Africa, you know, doing more than, 10 10 10, more than 10 percent, yeah. yes. So in, in terms of um, jobs, as I said, these are things that you, you can ol only get through um, research. Do, do you think that CBN's interventions are also not supporting the inflation target mandate of the central bank? because the interventions have pumped money into the system. We mm. know that we're fighting COVID-19. A lot of people lost jobs and are still losing. People are also dying, rising cases of COVID-19. So do you think that CBN's policies are not supporting indirectly their mandate of fighting inflation? So how do you think that the CBN should be able to, you know, uh, navigate this murky waters? It's by ramping up interventions. So Ramp yes. up the intervention. Yes. What Ra do you mean by that? Ramping up interventions in productive sectors. The interventions are in agri, they're in manufacturing. Okay. So if you put them in agri, for example, where you have um, so many of them, and you have the you have them in, in, in SMEs, okay, they will go to address the supply uh, uh, side, the deficit that we're experiencing on the supply. So if to the extent that the interventions will increase aggregate supply, that will moderate moderate inflation. That's why I said, for me, it's like a silver bullet. The economy is uh, being challenged by stagflation. You have mm -hmm. rising inflation on the one hand, on the you also have uh, contract, um, output contraction. Mm -hmm. Is that not so? How do you address that? You may not be able to address rising inflation using the monetary policy uh, traditional tools, but you can address that, especially when it is caused by you know, supply issues. You can address that by uh, increasing um, output. And that is why I, I was happy when I had the central bank governor talking about um, you know, restructuring the commodities exchange. Oh, okay. That was the breaking news. Yes. Tuesday. Yes. Because the central bank, uh, the Nigerian Commodities Exchange has been uh, inactive, so to say. You know, since it was um, established in um, uh, 1998, it was in 1998 that it was a st uh, stock, stock exchange converted to a commodity exchange in 2001, and since then it's been inactive. Whereas the Ethiopia Commodities Exchange that came up in 2008, you know, has been, um, you know, very uh, vibrant. Although we, of course, in Nigeria, we have private um, commodity exchanges that are that appear to be doing well. So, but, but the, the governor also accused them on Tuesday that uh, most of what they are doing is not to the benefit of, of the country. You know. Yes, and I, that is well, why there is a need to restructure the Nigeria Commodity Exchange. No, no, no. no. Well, well, I think if there is anything, the private commodity exchanges, of course, you know, the private ones. You have Afex, you have uh, Lagos Commodity and Futures Exchange, which we just got, got got licensed. So, if there is anything they are doing, that should be to the attention of the Securities and Exchange Commission, because Securities and Exchange Commission is the uh, um, the regulator, apex regulator of all exchanges, um, you know, uh, in Nigeria. And um, um, so, I am happy that the central bank is talking about um, you know, restructuring that place, since it has majority shareholding, about 60% or so, of the exchange. But again, I want also, also want to say that after the restructuring is done, the central bank should have a plan to eventually uh, you know, pull back and sell off some of those shares, let them be, let them be in the hands of the private um, sector, because it's the private sector that will be in a position to manage, better manage the commodity exchange as opposed to as opposed to the government. That's what, why the exchanges in Ethiopia, for example, that has substantial private sector input, the one in, in Rwanda, the East African exchange, in fact, that one is even a private um, outfit, that's why they're doing well. Now, on the issue of the private um, exchanges, you know, uh, doing uh, something that is um, inimical to, to the economy, I, I, uh, my understanding of um, that is uh, probably because, you know, if you, may, if you use the word hoarding, Mm -hmm. He said that they hoard commodities. commodities, but you know, uh, 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 sometimes you may need to um, warehouse commodities in order to smoothen, you know, prices. prices so so yeah. smoothen prices, so you don't bring them all out. Uh, prices crash, and then uh, so you have to to 
calibrate? Redu mm. To reduce mm. volatility, mm. you know, wide swings, okay, you may need to do whatever. So it's important that the, the central bank is in, um, in um, working with the, the Security and Exchange Commission, you know, to sort out um, issues with commodities exchanges, um, you know. How can the fiscal policymakers take center stage? I know it's, it's the difficult one for them right now because of scarcity of funds, but all prices are at least up from where they were some months yeah, ago. Yeah. Uh, how can the uh, money, uh, fiscal policy take center stage? Because so that at least they can cut the central bank is slack. Because if you take a look at it, the central bank is intervening because there's a failure in the system. The only game, the only game in game town. In town. That's what Mohamed El <laughs> said. Yes. The only game in town. town. He actually told me on the uh, show when I was asking, "Why wow, are stock markets everywhere just rising?" Uh, I yes. said, "Nancy, the central banks all over the world. Yes. That is why." Yeah. So, how come? Let can't the fiscal policy take? center stage. I know there was the launch of the National Economic Sustainability Plan yes. and the CBN also had a substantial uh, 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 role to funding, play. Funding, funding. Yes. yes. So how much attention should we be giving to these women and men? Because it's headed now by a woman, uh, Zainab Hamed, the fiscal policy side. Yes. yes. Um, you see, fiscal policy um, is hamstrung. Fiscal policy is um, constrained uh, because of the revenue you know, a challenge. If you also look at the budget, for example, which is a major fiscal uh, tool, um, most of the time implementation is stalled because of revenue challenge. Okay, so how can the uh, fiscal uh, authorities, um, you know, take charge? Okay, the answer is in um, ensuring that we have multiple streams of revenue, ensuring that we diversify our export base. So once we have multiple streams of revenue, Okay, then the federal government can be in a position, not only the federal government, even states and local government, they can be in a position to um, no, uh, do some of these things that the central bank at the moment you know, is doing. So if the, f the federal government, for example, is uh, not having enough money to do roads, to, to put, put power, you now find central bank having a power intervention fund. You know, central bank, uh, you know, going into, even in education, central bank now is in education. Look at central bank establishing a model. Center uh, of excellence. Center, uh, centers uh, of excellence. Uh, the everywhere. Central bank is also funding health. Okay. So these are ordinary things you will expect. Central bank are COVID now and would procure, uh, with PTF, procure uh, uh, vaccines for COVID. Uh -huh. And that also brings me to another issue. On mm. this issue, you know, I've, I just mentioned it here. We are not utilizing our universities uh, to, to the op um, optimum. Uh, th this issue of research should be given attention. Even the issue of, issue of va vaccines, our universities are in a position to, you know, uh, produce vaccines and even get a, a cure for, if well, if challenged, but we are not doing enough. Even in this issue of food uh, security, our universities too can also, okay, ensure food security. We have University of Agriculture, you know, three of them, the Federal University of Agriculture in Nigeria. Ha have they been challenged? Do they have targets? Okay, so we, we have to, uh, the earlier we paid attention, you know, to, um, to universities, tertiary institutions, you know, our research centers, you know, the better it will be for um, this country going forward. Okay, I think, uh, Prof, we'll leave it at that. So many things to discuss, yeah, but we'll absolutely. continue on another day. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for uh, yeah, my coming pleasure. and my lending pleasure, Nancy. your voice. Thank you. All right, I've been uh, speaking with Professor Uche Waleke, former Commissioner of Finance, Imo State. Let